The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in only mode. Hello, everybody. Uh, so let me just see who we've got here today. Uh, so Angela, Brendan, Corinne, Sue and Fidja. Welcome, everybody. Um, just ping me over a quick howdy doody in the questions box so that I know that you can hear me. I have a hi from Vidya. Hello. Marvellous. Tickety boo. Good stuff. All right. So um, this evening's webinar, uh, I am going to be handing the reins over to Lisa um, because, as you probably know, uh, a couple of months back, um, Lisa did a series of live webinars, which she sold, and um, she uh, followed a process not too dissimilar to one that um, I had followed when I did my webinar series back in the summer um, and she adapted it uh, slightly so that it would work well for her in the context of um, using a different mailing system and, and a few other tweaks and changes and um, I believe it was quite the learning experience so what I thought would be useful is for you to hear from Lisa today about how that process worked out for her what her sort of significant learnings from that uh, experience was and as she talks you through it I'm going to type up some uh, key points that she um, she shares with you and then I'll upload those key points with the webinar so that you've got them then for future reference um, and I think really the benefit of hearing about it from Lisa is uh, because she was coming at it from fresh she's really able to give you that overview of what the experience was like um, because I'm well aware that when I say to you, um, you know, I've done this and this is how to do it, um, I'm perhaps talking from uh, an experience where I've had um, a bit more uh, background in the technology side of it or the different applications, whereas Lisa was coming at it completely from fresh. So um, I'm going to be handing over the controls to her in just a second. And she will give us a, a nice big chunk of our content this evening. And then once um, we've got that info from Lisa, I'm then going to give you a couple of updates from the NLP for Kids End. One of them actually ties in with the webinar stuff. Um, and then another one just in regards to some um, updates for you guys as practitioners. So uh, let me just hand over to Lisa. Give me one second and I will find her here. Lisa. Uh, unmute Lisa. Let's do that. Lisa Bertles. Hi, everybody. Hello, Hello, there she is. <laughs> Hi, can you everybody hear me then? That's good. Well, I can, so I'm going to assume that everybody else can too. Um, I'm going to do my best, Lisa, to make sure that when I'm typing up some of the key points that you're sharing with us this evening, um, I'll do my very best not to... Um, tap too loudly as I'm typing because that might be a bit disruptive <laughs> otherwise so you'll have to let me know if if it starts giving you a headache <laughs> okay will do thanks Gemma all right over to so, you good hi good evening everybody um I know that uh, a number of you have asked me for my feedback on the webinars and um we've we've spectacularly failed to sort of uh, connect over the summer so really glad to have this opportunity so um where do i start so this was a really really big learning curve for me um i hadn't realized quite how much and just to give you a bit of background i have delivered um and presented on webinars many many times um from in my corporate life um what i didn't quite appreciate was all the stuff going on in the background and in the past when I've presented, um, I literally could almost just turn up and do my stuff and know that someone was taking care of everything else behind the scenes. Um, so um, I'll share the learning with you about all of that really. Um, I'd start by saying um, I, I, I was very much driven um, by a towards strategy like Gemma, um, I really needed the money at, at the time and so I thought this sounds like a great idea, I'll, I'll have a go at this. Um, and I started by following the steps in Gemma's email. Um, what I very quickly realised though was that some of the pieces of technology that 
um, Gemma and her business are able to support. I, I, I'm not yet at my stage, at the stage in my business where I could support some of those. So I use different technology. Um, so I didn't use Infusionsoft. Um, and, and that means that my process wasn't perhaps quite as automated as Gemma's was. So I know there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to set things up in Infusionsoft. Um, but once you set it up, if you set it up correctly, it does run automatically um, pretty much. Um, I chose instead to use MailChimp because it was free. And um, with Gemma's expert tuition and mentoring, I very quickly exported all of the contacts from my LinkedIn and all of my mail packages. And I ended up with a database of about a thousand. And I was really chuffed with myself, actually, thinking oh, I'm going to be mailing a lot of people here. Um, but it was only when I realized later, speaking to Gemma, that her database is something like 22,000. Um, that I, I realise I've got quite a long way to go. Anyhow, um, MailChimp, um, it's free. Most of the features that I needed are free um, that, and that you would need are free. And I found it pretty easy to use that and to set it up. Um, and Gemma had already said that she had used PayPal um, as one of the payment options because um, people seem to trust PayPal so I decided I would go with that as well because I don't have um, an online shop or e-commerce facility at all on my website. So what I did was I created a separate PayPal account from my personal one. So um, kind of setting it up separately from all the selling of the kids' old clothes and old tat out of my loft in my personal eBay account and whatnot. Um, I set up a business one. And in there, I set up payment buttons. Um, and the payment buttons were, you could buy one of the webinars for one price, or you could buy all four of them for a, a little bit of a discount. And it wasn't too bad, actually, setting that up. I, I didn't find it too difficult. Um, but when I embedded the, um, the button into the website, uh, my NLP for Kids page, it didn't work. So I thought, oh, I must have done something wrong. And I rang PayPal and I have to say their customer service was absolutely fantastic. And it turned out that it wasn't me at all. It's just one of those tech technical glitches um, that it had created it and it hadn't worked. The coding behind it hadn't worked. So they taught me through doing it again and it did. So, um, so I'm, I'm on one of the steps really where you... Um, one of the early steps on Gemma's um, email, the, the big long email, which was about um, writing your your landing page or your WordPress page or whatever you want to call it, but it's it's basically a page on your on your NLP for Kids website or an, or your other business website if you have one, where you will where people will will click to if they um, open your email that you've sent them from MailChimp. Um, so I think let's take a, take a step back actually and say there are a lot of steps here and you mustn't underestimate how long it's going to take if you've never done it before. And I think as Gemma indicated, um, when she first told us all about the webinars and, and they were going really well, we were all really impressed and really motivated um i think we need to remember how just how experienced Gemma is and how she's been kind of living and breathing this type of stuff for quite a number of years so um so perhaps sailed through it a little bit more easily than than i did for sure um so just think about your own level of experience and make sure you don't underestimate the time that you you put aside for this um I went for a series of four webinars. Um, I called it the self-esteem series and I had four webinars of content that all linked back in some way to self-esteem. And I think my learning now would tell me that it might have been better to start off more gently and perhaps do one or two. 
because I have to say that they these four webinars completely consumed me for about a month. Um, no kidding. I was like eating, sleeping and dreaming about them really. Um, it becomes very, very clear that you need to, for, for me anyway, that writing the material in advance of, of selling them is probably a really good idea. Um, I had mapped it all out loosely, um, but I think that one of the things that put pressure on me was the pressure to be delivering week on week um, these four webinars and at the same time as writing the material that, that went with them. So if you've not done it before and you want to do it, think about how you might want to start, you know, start off gently. The other thing that I would say, though, is that the first one was um, pretty challenging, actually, and I'll come on to why. Um, if I hadn't done a second one and a third one and a fourth one, I don't know whether I ever would have gone back to do them at all because um, it was the first one was such a such a shock to the system, really. Um, so. Yeah, it was a, this huge learning curve, as I said. Um, why was the first one such um, a baptism of fire? Well, the biggest single reason for me was that I was expecting interaction in the same way that we all have interaction on these webinars and also in the way that I've experienced um, in corporate world as well. Um, and I just didn't get it. Um, I was asking questions, I wasn't getting the response, um, but at the same time, what I was getting um, are some text messages from one of the participants saying, oh, I can't see the slides, oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> so at the same time, as dealing with this kind of issue of thinking nobody's responding to me here, I was also having to try and run the technology and respond to this participant at, at the same time. So. Um, what did I do differently on the second one? Well, I actually got on the phone to a really good friend of mine who works in professional in a professional communications role. She's actually a, a virtual business um, administrator. And I asked her if she would be um, a co-host with me and keep her eye on all the technology. Um, and, and also to kind of help me dealing with any kind of issues and questions and also to give me some feedback, which was really, really helpful. Um, and I guess you might say, well, why on earth didn't you get some friends on board with this and get them to kind of ask some questions and what have you? Well, um, let's say you might find out kind of that your friends aren't all interested in this kind of stuff or they're busy. Um, or they say that they will and then they don't because something happens on the day. So um, another workaround actually would be to think about and try and anticipate the kind of questions that, that people would want to ask but are maybe too afraid to um, on, on a public webinar um, and just say, well, this is a kind of question that somebody um, has asked me previously and, and deal with it like that. Um, the other thing... The other couple of things about my first webinar, I would say that my my slides probably weren't good enough, and I think also my personal performance in terms of delivery and maintaining the, um, the positive tone and the energy level in myself, um, it was hard to maintain over the, the period of the webinar, but I, I got better at that actually over, over time. Um, and I also um, asked my colleague to help me with the slides as well. Um, so that was really, really helpful. Um, so I think this, this, there's something here, um, a learning point about all of us running our own little businesses is you, you can't be brilliant at everything necessarily. And so if, you know, PowerPoint slides aren't your thing, then you might just want to get someone to help you with that as well. Um, Another question that you might want to consider is is whether or not you want to actually have a script um, to go along with your slide presentation. 
Um, for me, it felt quite important to have one because I was afraid of kind of, of drying up and not not having anything to say. But at the same time, I think you've got to manage your performance and make sure that you get that nice blend of kind of spontaneous um, interaction um, as well, or, or or and making it sound a little bit more natural and. And bearing in mind, if you don't have anybody piping up and interacting with you, it's all kind of made up. So really, really, it is a performance. It very much is a performance. And um, I actually started to do rehearsals with myself and found that I could um, sort of G, my, G up my voice and, and what have you quite nicely by doing the warm-up and the rehearsal um, and so that when when it came to the actual go live um, I, I was okay with it. Um, another learning point and it may not apply to everybody but I'm not fortunate enough to have an office in my house at the moment and I'm working in the kitchen. The first week my family were absolutely wonderful and they stayed out of the house but I was online a bit longer than I expected and the poor souls had to sit outside in the car in the dark before they could come inside, um, which was a bit unfortunate for all of them, but hey-ho. Um, the next time I read them the riot act and they were allowed to stay in the house, um, but it didn't stop my teenager from actually coming and standing right in front of me when I was online asking me questions and I'm way madly waving my arms around at him going get out of the room so um think about where you do your webinars um and and the kind of interruptions you might have to manage um I went for the 7 30 in the evening slot and it's just a hugely hugely busy time in our house that and um and, and I suspect it is in other people's as well so even the people that sign up to your webinar with good intention, they may be hugely busy, not be able to go on online live at the time and intend to listen later. Um, and that also can drive the levels of, in, of live interaction that you get as well. Um, last point I think for me um, would be, there is a huge amount of admin um, that go along with the webinars. And, and so if it's all, pre-done and it's automated all well and good but if it isn't if it's MailChimp you probably are going to be pretty busy responding to queries about payment about how do they sign up to go to webinar or whatever package you use um, and so on and so forth so just be aware of that and and manage your time and so just take it step by step really um would I do it again uh, yeah, absolutely. I would. I'd definitely do it again. It's raised huge amounts of kind of publicity for me. It's driven new people to my social media. Um, and it, I, I've just learned so much and I've come on such a long way with it all that, um, you know, even, even in terms of things like knowing how to create an MP4 pile, a file, a recording file, and knowing how to upload it, how to create a YouTube channel and, and things like that. I've learned so much and it's, it's definitely a great platform. So I would most definitely do it again. I will do it advisedly though, knowing that I haven't got anything else on at the time and that, um, and knowing the support that I personally need in place to to help me be successful with that. Um, I've still not got to the point where I've put the recordings on my little shop on my website or anything like that. Um, but I've, I have had people asking about them, so I am going to go ahead and do it. Um, so, yeah, good stuff. Um, Go for it and um, just make sure that you think think it all through and plan it out carefully um, before you get started. So that's about enough from me, I think. That's wonderful. Thank Does you very much, Lisa. Thank you. Have you got a couple of minutes? Just um, if anyone's got any questions, uh, if they could ping them over really super quick, because I know Lisa's got to get off to, uh, are you collecting from football practice or something today? Um, swim training there but we I've go got 10 minutes before i have to get in the car so i'd l love some questions all right let me see what we've got here for you so uh corinne says did you use go to webinar yes i did use go to webinar and i used the free trial version of it it's 
it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's not the most fantastic piece of software I've ever used in my life. Mm -hmm. um, some of the bits are easy to use, some of them maybe not so easy. Um, so it's well worth giving it a go. I'm actually trialing another one now um, called Zoom. Um, and I'll be glad to report back on that. But I didn't. I decided at the end of it not to sign up for the full go to webinar thing because mm. there were some things I didn't like about it. Really. Did you have any connection issues with it at all? Just out of interest, were people able to hear everything all okay? Ah, that's that's a really good question. Um, we've got that fibre broadband from BT in our house, and it, it's pretty good. So I was really lucky. That was one thing I didn't really have a problem with. Okay. Um, however, the first time I I delivered, I didn't use um, a headset with a microphone on it, and mm -hmm. people could hear me fine. But when I um, when I did my rehearsal for the second one with my with my um, colleague, she said that it was so much nicer using the headset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good feedback. Um, uh, Priya says, "Can we ask income?" Yeah, you can ask income. So my income was about a tenth of the last reported income that Gemma um, reported. So <laughs> I made six hundred quid from okay. my. Okay, um, that's that's not too shabby for a, for a starting block. It's, it's, it's not too shabby, and like as I said, I really needed that six hundred quid yeah. at the time. Um, so it was fantastic, and I think there'll be ongoing residual income from it. I think there's definitely opportunity to create other products like little ebooks or mm -hmm. guides and things um, as well. And I, so I don't feel like I'm I'm not done yet. I haven't milked this fully at all. Okay. Um, and I think I wish I you know I, I needed to plan that into my schedule as well. Really. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon says, would you now invest into Infusionsoft for ease of life and knowing that your webinars attract the right attention? Um, probably in the future, yes. I still don't think I'm quite there yet. And I, the other thing I do know is that Infusionsoft is going to take quite a while for me to learn how to use. Mm -hmm. So I would do it advisedly. I mean, yeah. take advice from our Gemma. Um, but it's still, I think it's a big investment. And I, yeah. unless you've got a really thriving business, I don't know whether I would go there just yet. Mm -hmm. um, and Vidya says, how uh, did you do market research on the topics? Um, so your topics, it was all based around self-esteem. Was that correct? Yeah. Um, um, well, um, it's based on the types of issues my a typical client mm -hmm. that comes to see me has presented with and it, it, my market research was literally it was based on a conversation with a maths teacher that I know who does private tutoring and she got in touch with me because she said that she didn't think it was a maths issue or a skill issue with her students it was mainly a belief and mm -hmm. self-esteem issue with them and um, they all kind of go around with this maths is hard can't do it um, I'm going to look silly, um, I'm going to fail. So um, I started from there and I built around that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. All right, let me just see if there's any more. Um, there's lots of... Uh, well done, congratulations, and um, thanks for sharing. Uh, so uh, very useful. Um, so yeah, people are really appreciating um, those bits of detail because, I, as I say, those are the bits that kind of pass me by because I'm just used to cracking on and, and getting on with it, um, having had lots of experience, particularly on the tech side. So it's really valuable for for people to be able to hear from you on this. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, no, thank you, everybody, and and I, I'd like to say a big thank you to to Gemma and and to Angela in particular. Who Angela did sit in on one of the of the webinars for me, and um, she, you know, she 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 talked to me beforehand and she gave me some feedback afterwards, mm -hmm. which was really really helpful. Um, so um, you know, as always, being inspired by Gemma and and your Gemma, your your initial email with the process steps in there was was really a great starting point for me good that's good to know um final question from vidya um when can or where and when um will people be able to uh 
uh, hear the recordings. So I know you said um, you've got the recordings. Are they going to be going on your website soon? Yes, they are. And um, so the, the answer to this is that I really want to, re I have rewritten and want to re-record webinar one. And when I've done that, then I will make them available to the whole world. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you'd be more than welcome to tune in. Marvellous. So I will let you know. Likely to be in the next couple of weeks that I manage to get that one done. Super. I will keep us posted. And another thing that might be useful for you to look at, and this is something I've yet to do with mine, is um, Udemy. Uh, so someone has said to me, make sure you get those webinars um, uploaded onto Udemy. And I kind of got halfway through the process, but didn't get around to finishing it off yet. So that'll be another place uh, for you to look at as well. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really great idea. Thank you. It's one of the other great things, everybody, that it's driven for me is... Um, my kids' school have taken an interest in it, and their peer mentors, the person who looks after their peer mentors, um, wants to do it because she's um, thinking about providing some resources and support for parents. But I, we also got to talking about the peer mentors themselves, what would be some useful snippets for them to have. Um, so we're, we're hoping to collaborate on putting together some shorter. Um, if not webinars, then little podcasts or some or little videos nice. that the peer mentors can watch. Because we know that our, our young people, um, you know, they, they, they just live on YouTube, don't they? So any kind of yeah. quick tips on, on things like that would mm -hmm. be very helpful to them as well. So there's just, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. And I just think your, your experience and skill grows with, with the more practice you get. To yeah, be honest. definitely. One day I'm going to go back and listen to the very first NLP for Kids webinars, and uh, and I'll probably I'll throw up. They'll be awful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that first one. Oh, and the whole dry cotton mouth thing. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not, not good. Not good. And then I had a glass of water by me, and my communications friend said, "You can't be heard to be drinking water when you're on a webinar." So. <laughs> You know, there's so much things, so many things you have to think about. Yeah, it's amazing that the funny little things that you sort of take for granted that can suddenly crop up. Um, yeah. It yeah. All right, super. Well, I'm conscious you need to uh, get off to go do your collection. So thank you very much for sharing with us. And um, I've got some good thank notes here, so I'll go back through those. And then if there's anything you think of that you want to add to them, then you can let me know. I will do, Gemma. Thanks ever so much, and um, see you all soon, everybody. All right, take care. Bye. Bye. Alrighty, so I have a list here of bits and bobs that I've generated from um, what Lisa has said. I will add this in with the webinar, but let me just do a quick recap now. So, uh, number one, be prepared for a learning curve. Uh, be prepared to be flexible on the technology. Um, there will be some setup required, and if you're not using, for example, Infusionsoft, you will have to put in that extra effort to get things set up. Um, export your LinkedIn database, but build it up as much as possible first. So there's um, some small changes to how you export your database in LinkedIn now, um, probably compared to the videos that are on the forum. The only real difference is that um, there is a short time delay. So you used to just be able to download the database directly to your desktop uh, straight away as soon as you requested it. Now what they do is they um, say thank you for your request and we're going to email it to you shortly. It's normally emailed to you within minutes um, and there'll be two emails that come through and it's the uh, the first email that contains all of your contact emails in there. Um, so MailChimp is free and it is completely straightforward to use as Lisa said. Now there are different levels of support Support that you can get with MailChimp. Um, you can set up some automated facilities in there, but that's when you have to start paying for it. And you can send, I think it's up to 12,000 emails every month um, completely for free, but obviously you don't get the automation included with that. 
Um, so PayPal is trusted and people will use it. Um, I've certainly, uh, my experience from doing the webinars was we, we had more sales of that than anything ever. Um, but I think using PayPal for the first time was also a big part of that because it's so easy. Um, you know, there's, uh, I've set something up now with the people building PayPal account, um, which some of you might get introduced to. And I think it's called something like paypal.me. Uh, and you get a um, sort of a specific domain name for your PayPal account and people can pay you in a one click function. Um, so, uh, you know, PayPal's um, still very forward thinking in that way. It makes it very easy for people to make payments. Um, do set up a separate PayPal account though to your personal one just to keep your accounting straightforward. And you ideally want to set up a business one because then that will give you access to the um, payment creation buttons, which are very easy to set up. Uh, so do give your customers some choice, perhaps giving them a lower price if they pay for a whole package. And do get help from the experts. Uh, most of the facilities that you're using, MailChimp, PayPal, etc., will have a help and advice function. So don't waste time staying stuck. Ask for help. Um, you will need to invest your time up front to get it all set up and it will take you longer if you're inexperienced in using the technology. Um, potentially think about setting up a series of one or two webinars initially, test it out um, and get used to generating that content on a regular basis. Be prepared, people will try to contact you via every other form of medium whilst you're mid-webinar Ironically, just as the webinar was starting, I got a text message from Lisa, which said, um, I can't find the joining link for go to webinar and I'm in a panic. So literally, I get this every single webinar. There's always a text, an email, both Facebook messages at the start of every single webinar that I do with someone saying, I can't get in, I can't find the code, this isn't working, da 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 da. So be prepared, you will get all of that too. Um, consider having a wing, wingman to uh, give you some feedback, someone that you can test stuff out with, just as Lisa did. And think about the questions that people might ask. Think about those in advance of what you're going to be delivering and either include those in your content or sound very clever by having the answers instantly when people do actually ask those questions. Get your slides all up to scratch. Be prepared uh, to keep your energy levels consistent and high throughout. And maybe think about outsourcing the tasks that you uh, don't need to do, that are not essential for you to be doing. For example, creating your PowerPoint so that you can keep your energy for other more important things, especially your delivery. Um, consider having a script to follow versus going natural and spontaneous. Um, I think it's, it's, you know, you've got to be somewhere in between the two. You need some form of framework that you're gonna be following, maybe not going as far as having a script um, because you do want it to have that spontaneity element to it. And I think people can tell if you're reading, you know, it does something different to uh, your tone of voice and how you're delivering. Think of it as a performance. I thought that was great advice because it definitely is. Um, and I was certainly aware from the webinars that I did, probably less so for these ones because I'm a bit more relaxed because, you know, we're all family. But with the webinars that I did through the summer, um, I was very aware that afterwards, you know, I really had to have some wind down time because I felt as if I'd been presenting on stage, um, albeit, you know, sat at the kitchen table in my pajamas. Um, and think about where you're hosting it from. Are there going to be any distractions? So uh, I have to, when I do my webinars, I have to make sure that all of my, um, like Skype is switched off, Evernote switched off, my text messages are switched off, that I can't see my phone, that my notifications aren't going to show up, um, because all of those things can be very distracting, even if I'm not actually going to engage with them. Just the fact I might see a message there and it, it catches my eye can take me off my game a little bit um, and think about the time of day that you're doing your webinars as well is there a more peaceful time of day for you and if it's a more peaceful time of day will that still work with the people that actually want to attend and, and what their availability is going to be like 
Um, consider the admin that's going to be required in advance of doing anything. Um, you are going to need to respond to their questions about payment, um, about the signing up process, and you know what, in all honesty, um, having Infusionsoft at that point in time doesn't really help you at all because people will ask you those questions anyway. I mean, um, we send out emails, for example, um, what have I sent out recently? Book promotion stuff. Uh, and I've been very clear that all the information you need is on the page when you click this link. Um, and uh, all the information about the payment is on this page. All the information about the shipping is on this page. I'll still get emails from people saying, can you tell me about the shipping? Can you tell me about the payment? Can you tell me how much it is? And you're like, ah, it's on the page. <laughs> um, so you're still going to get that regardless. What I would suggest, though, is having a frequently asked questions page or, um, you know, an FAQs email that you send out, something like that. Get it all together in advance. Um, anticipate what their challenges or questions might be, have those pre-answered, and then if you get any extra ones, add those ones into your FAQs page as well. And then that way, you make it much easier for yourself so that when you get those emails coming in saying, um, you know, I can't find the sign up information or when do you send out the recording or any of that stuff, you can say it's all here on the FAQs page and just send them a link to that instead. Um, so use what you do to your very best advantage. Think about how you are going to recycle and reuse this content. For example, Lisa was saying there about how it's really created a buzz on social media for her, how it's created some inroads into school and so on. So you want to be recycling this stuff as much as possible, but the key things being plan, 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 and then just go for it. All right, so I hope that was very helpful for all of you. And on that note, uh, let me just include some follow-up uh, from my end with my webinars. So um, I'm sure you will all know by now that there is um, an NLP for kids about to uh, get published. And that book is, uh, the content in that book has come entirely or almost entirely, from my webinars. So um, we had a couple of uh, kids coming in on work experience, and one of the tasks that I got them to do was to type up all of the webinars that I'd done. And then over the last few weeks, I've been going back through what was typed up, tidying it up, adding bits in, taking some bits out as well, um, and essentially, um, you know, adding a bit in at the beginning and a bit at the end to summarise it all to create the content for my book. So um, it will be really interesting, and I will have to do this at some stage, is to sort of uh, collate a grand total from uh, a financial perspective of um, what the webinars created, but also just in terms of the content that was created from them. Because with um, with the book coming out, obviously that's another uh, content stream that's been created, but there'll be bits from the book that we can use perhaps in blog posts or in our social media and so on. So it's really, um, I've rinsed this basically as much as I possibly could, you know, I've really squeezed that rag dry for that webinar um, a series that I created and actually that was entirely my intention all along was to demonstrate to you um, what I'm always saying about no one thing is ever one thing you've got to use this in as many different formats as possible so obviously I had the webinar um, then I sold the recordings off the back of that. Now we've got the book off the back of that, and I'm sure there will be more stuff still to come from it, um, even in the months and, and maybe over the course of next year as well. So, um, yes, so that's what's happening with me. I have the book coming out. It's being edited at the moment, and I'm hoping that it will all be good to go by about the 1st of October. Um, what I will do with that when I get a minute to do so is I'll set you all up with some um, affiliate links in Infusionsoft, which means that if you want to sell the book um, to your own clients, obviously read it first, check that, you know, you like it and you agree with it. Um, and if you want to then start promoting it, then I'll give you some kickback from the sales so that um, you're able to make some money from uh, selling it too.
and other updates from me. Um, so I uh, just wanted to give you a sort of brief update on where we're at with numbers of practitioners uh, these days. Oh, let me just go back to the book thing. So um, Corinne just said, are you self-publishing? Yes, I am. And that's a whole new learning curve in itself. So I will write up my notes about that and the sort of process that I went through and the tricky bits with that. So I'll do all the same thing for you there, Corinne, so that um, you can follow those steps too, should you want to. Um, so yes, updates about NLP for kids practitioners. Um, we are currently, including myself, at 19 practitioners. So I just did a training back in August, an NLP for kids training, um, and uh, there were a few people that were due to retrain at that point in time and did not. Um, in fact, there was three of them that, that were due to show up for that training. Um, and uh, as a result, uh, I've said to them now, you know, your licenses have expired because you've missed the uh, the date by which you would have been able to retrain. Obviously, your licenses state you need to retrain every three years. Um, so we are now at 19 practitioners and... Uh, We've got some new big stuff coming up in the next few months, but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I just want to get all my ducks lined up before I um, before I share that information with you. Um, but uh, on that note, just around sort of being up to date with your um, training and whatnot, um, a couple of other important things to mention. So. I know uh, with a few of you sort of over the course of the last nine months or so where you've had your documentation has needed to be updated and um, I've had a few people come to me and saying, oh, you know, so, this bit's out of date, but can I still stay on the website or, you know, I'm in the process of getting this book, but can I just keep my profile page up until I've got it done? Um, the answer is going to be no and I'm getting more strict with this now. So the key things are your training has to be up to date, your DBS check has to be up to date, first aid, uh, safeguarding, which is your child protection training, um, and data protection certificates. We're going to start pushing you a bit more heavily for those as well now, because some of you have slipped through, through the net on that one, and, and you should have that in place. Um, and just so that you know, I'm not just being tough on you, just to put it into perspective. Uh, earlier this year, I found my DBS certificate, which I took with me when I was going into school, and realised that it was two weeks out of date. Now, I had a feeling that I'd had another one done since then, but... I couldn't find the damn thing. And uh, Coolia was still with me at the time. And I said to her, I know I've got another DBS, but I can't find it. And until I find it, I'm going to have to come off the website. And it was really frustrating because I knew I had another certificate somewhere. So I phoned up the company that did the DBS checks for us and said to them, oh, can you just tell me when my last DBS check was done? And they only gave me the date for the one that had expired. So uh, for a week, I was off the website and it coincided with the same week that um, Mr. Tumble was also taken off the BBC because his DBS check had expired as well. So you can kind of imagine that there's me and Mr. Tumble in that cafe that they use in The Apprentice when they failed a task. The both of us sat there drinking tea out of polystyrene cups because neither of us were allowed to work with children that week. Um, Anyway, fortunately, I did find my DBS certificate. It got put into a drawer underneath some other paperwork. And uh, and so, therefore, I wasn't off the website for too long at all. Um, but, you know, the, the rules don't just apply to you. I do apply those rules to myself as well. And now that the team is smaller, we have no excuse for um, really being able to uh, manage our systems a little bit more effectively and that said this is still your own business and so you know just in the same way that you have to make sure that you insure your car and you have to make sure that you've got the MOT up to date and all of those things that you would ordinarily do in your life you also have to do those in your business too so that if for some reason our notification doesn't pop up to say so and so's insurance is about to run out it doesn't matter because you're on top of it for yourself anyway so um i just wanted to you know make that all very clear that um we will continue to be on your case about this stuff um and making sure that all of your files are up to date and so on 
And in regards to the DBS, uh, if you didn't already know about this, then um, next time your DBS check is done, if you haven't already, do sign up to the update service. So the update service is where they provide you with a code as well as the paper certificate um, and you pay to keep that code you pay on an annual basis and it's 12 pounds every year and what that code does is um, it's appointed to your own personal um, uh, criminal history or lack of criminal history with any luck and um, it means that when you go into a school for example instead of having to take in, take in your paper DBS, you just give them the code and they can then perform a live up-to-date search on you at any point in time. So it's a much more effective system than the kind of, you know, getting a paper certificate every three years uh, because this is kept up to date on a moment-to-moment -moment basis and it actually works out cheaper for you because it's only £12 per year anyway. Now the only downside is, is that you can't join this whenever you feel like it you only get a small window of opportunity to sign up to the update service and that window of opportunity is um, within a few days of you having received your DBS uh, certificate after you have um, had your most recent DBS check and I want to say you've got 30 days but I'm not 100% sure if I'm telling the truth there but I think it's about 30 days that you've got as a window of opportunity to sign up to that update service. If you miss it, then you won't get that chance until you do another DBS check uh, next time around. All right, so um, that is all of the updates thus far from me. Um, I will be in touch by email with some other updates on, on bits and pieces in the coming weeks. Um, and was there anything else? Any more for any more? Oh, yes, there is. Uh, the next... The next, the next open house is in October. I believe it's the 14th of October. Can you please let me know if you're either coming or not coming to that? Um, because I'm not going to be around on that day. So um, I'm just conscious. I don't want someone showing up at the office and, you know, you're the only person there. Um, so if you can let me know what your intentions are around coming along to the open house. I think it's the 14th of October. And... Um, also, I'm going to send out to you a survey, which I might make an anonymous survey, um, but basically what I want to know is are you using the monthly marketing kits that are sent out to you after you've done the monthly survey? Um, the reason why I want to know this is because it takes three weeks for me to create the content for the year and I would like to know whether I'm investing my time wisely or whether I shouldn't be bothering. Um, so I'm going to send out a survey to you so that I can get your feedback on um, whether I should be continuing with that for next year or not. So um, yeah, if you can fill that out for me once you get it, that would be fab. All right, so that is all for this evening. It was lovely to speak to you. I hope all of that info that Lisa shared there was helpful to you. And I look forward to seeing you all um, getting yourselves up and running with some webinars um, in the next few weeks and months. All right, lovely to speak to you, everybody. And I will talk to you all in one month's time. Goodbye for now.